then get it right back. Well, the Argos have two receivers going out there, and the idea is that they're going to draw a defender up to Cackard on the swing and get Chad Owens out on that wheel route. He's open right there, but throw the ball on a line and throw it earlier instead of that arcing ball and letting him run under it. Hit him early. Dalton Bell didn't need to lead him like that on the play. Joaquin Bradley's second pick of the season, the former Hamilton Tiger Cat. And now Ricky Ray and the Eskimos scrimmage from their 21. Jerome Messam again, slicing inside. Three-yard pickup, Ronald Clements again, hauls him down. The Eskimos are feeding the Argonauts a steady diet of Jerome Messam here in the second half. Just symbolic of the rebuilding job the Eskimos are doing here, focusing on building that Canadian depth. A guy like Jerome Messam, who along with Calvin McCarty, could allow this team to start Canadians at running back. They've deepened their Canadian receiver pool as well. Nice job by the Eskimo manager. Second down, seven. Ray from the pocket. Brad Stamps. What a catch. Taking a hit by Lynn J. Shell. And I guess that why, that is why Fred Stamps proclaims himself as the best receiver in the league. Ricky Ray now passes Doug Flutie for sixth all-time in completions. And in somewhat spectacular fashion with that dart to his favorite target, Freddie Stamps. Fred Stamps, four touchdowns already in the young season. A touchdown in each game. A hundred-yard receiving in each game. Behind that number here tonight, and still looking for his first touchdown of the game. That one was up high, thrown in the vicinity of Jason Barnes, but a little too high. Maybe his brother might have been able to catch that. nba -er. Yeah, that was in the Matt Barnes range. Second down again for the Eskimos. Ricky Ray coming into tonight. Eight touchdown passes, only one pick. And a 67% completion ratio. It's a low toss. The official right there, Marcus Henry, and that is ruled incomplete up near the 50-yard line. So, again, Damon Duvall will come out and will kick to Chad Owens. And this ball is just too low for the receiver to get down on. May have even been tipped to see it go through the elbows of Marcus Henry. Or Jayhawk Marcus Henry, who scored earlier tonight his first CFL touchdown. Chad Owens. Here's 30. Owens now picks his way near the 40-yard line. Time now for our sack tally, brought to you by Purelator, tackling hunger across Canada. Check in the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. An astronomical number, 21 sacks already. Yeah, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers' pass rush has been somewhat ridiculous through the first part of this season. Eskimos and Argos, middle of the pack. Great start for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. What an emotional win last night. We should send our condolences and sympathies to the family of Richard Harris. Assistant coach who passed away earlier this week. Davis Reed. An emotional chat with his team before the game, talking about his good friend, Richard Harris, who passed away. A shocking time for the Blue Bombers and their team this week and certainly all of those close to Richard Harris a chance to get to know that man you saw him he usually gave you a hug I mean Richard Harris fans may not have all known who he was he was never a guy who was a head coach in this league never the most visible guy but to those within the CFL regardless of team regardless of your role one of the most beloved figures in the Canadian Football League very sad week in Winnipeg the loss of Richard Harris Dalton Bell deep Spencer Watt had it and had six if he was able to bring it in but there's a penalty flag back at the 36 yard line just as Dalton Bell threw that football and is it roughing the passer unnecessary roughness roughing the quarterback 
Edmonton number 97, 15-yard penalty, first down. So the Argos get a break here after Dalton Bell got rocked, and Spencer Watt gets a reprieve. Number 97, Julius Williams, the hard shove to Dalton Bell after the ball was thrown. Gives the Argos new life on this drive. Dalton Bell was right on the money with that throw. First and 10 Argos from the 51 of the Eskimos. Still on his feet and fumbled it again, but got it back. Chad Cackert, maybe it's his running style or whatever. He's able to bowl through a lot of bodies, but does have an issue with hanging on to that football. Yeah, challenge for, for Chad Cackert. Not, he's a big guy, thickly built, but not tall. I mean, not a guy who has the biggest hands or the longest arms to be able to secure that football, and that may be an issue. Yardage 113 tonight. Second and short yardage. Cackard hangs on again. And again bolts his way forward as they try to rip it out of his hands. Munoz is there, but it will all depend on the spot. It is a four-yard pickup. It will be a first down for the Argos at the 40-yard line. And he runs hard. Well, Chad Cackard, little ball of hate 2.0. Just goes barreling into defenders. He's got that low center of gravity. He's physical, explosive, accelerates very well. For the second year in a row, the Argonauts have themselves a real find at running back. First and 10 again, Dalton Bell gives it to Cackard again, head down. J.C. Sherrick pushes him back. And there they are, colliding. Sherrick and Chad Cacker. They're almost clones of each other. They only play on the other side of the ball. Well, two of the top first-year players in this 2011 CFL season. The guys who play very hard. Sherrick from Eastern Washington. Packard from New Hampshire. Second down. Outlet pass to Andre Dury. First down past the 30 inside the 25 yard line. Nicely executed quick hitter there from the Toronto Argonauts. Good play call from coordinator Jamie Elizondo. Nice job by Dalton Bell to get it out in a hurry to Dury. Dury steps off the line at the right side of the screen to set up. Good block coming outside in by the other slot. Spencer Watt. Little hit screen that was behind Dalton Bell. Likely a running play. And this one ahead, Andre Dury straight arm. Andre Dury stumbling forward. Close to another first down, down near the Eskimo 15. Oh, what an effort by Andre Dury straight arm and he picked up about five extra yards as he was falling down just by getting that hand down and scrambling along the ground. Gain is six here. It'll be second down and four yards to go. Well, the straight arm dusted off a pretty good DB at Chris Thompson. Dalton Bell applauds the effort at number 32. Eighth play of the drive under a minute to go. Argos eat up some of the clock here. Four yards, play action, Watt hangs on. It's a first down, hit hard by T.J. Hill near the 11. Spencer Watt not letting go of that football. Native of North Vancouver, B.C. I like what the Argos do with this series. They move Chad Cackert out of the backfield. That takes the linebacker Munoz out and shows that it's gonna be man coverage as well. One less bigger body in the box. Gives you the option to try and run the football with Andre Dury moving into the backfield position. An Argo team that has scored fewer points than any team in the CFL this year. Moving the football here. Trying to find the end zone again. Packer going backwards this time. Weldon Brown spotted him. Read it perfectly. And it's a loss of three. Well, that looked like a play where given the option if Dalton Bell could have pulled the football, I'm sure having it to do over again, he would have. 
He had some room out to the right side after the, the handoff. Brent Stubler watching now. Saw him shouting out some instructions. Former Argo head coach and defensive coordinator now. Second down and 13. Inside the 15. Bell with time. End zone for Copeland. It's picked off again. Rod Williams snuffs up the Argo drive. That's just a badly thrown ball by Dalton Bell. Final play of the third quarter. The Argos come away empty. Edmonton football when we come back. Three quarters down here at Commonwealth Stadium. The Argos up by two. You can see all the numbers. Before this game, Dalton Bell, knowing he's going to get his first start of the season, preached patience, and he said he had to be more careful. Ball security moving in. That's now his fourth interception in the last two games. Yeah, and last week, Dalton Bell sort of explained that coming off the bench, he tried to do too much, trying to impress the coaches and earn more playing time, but essentially felt that here, playing against the Toronto, or against the Edmonton Eskimos in a Rich Dugo defense, you have to take what they give you, be patient, don't try to force it. This ball, Dalton Bell tried to force it to Jermaine Copeland. Typical Rich Stubler defense. That drive, 10 plays, 56 yards, eight up, five and a half minutes. The bend, but don't break. And they don't break again. No, they, they sure didn't, but I mean, they, they lured a young quarterback into the trap on that play. Rod Williams, second interception. Alcorn State. All games played, one interception last year. That was a huge one. Rick Stubler's M.O. defensively is to keep teams under 20 points. He says if you keep them under 20, you have a good chance to win. Ricky Ray's in trouble again. Let's it go. And Marcus Henry has another catch here tonight. Sixth reception of the evening over the 40-yard line. Ricky Ray. And another first down for the Edmonton Eskimos. Well, Marcus Henry lines up at wide out on this play, pushes the corner deep. Textbook hook route. Push deep. Work back to the football. 16-yard pickup for Marcus Henry. Good night here for him tonight, including his first CFL touchdown earlier. There's that four-man rush. Little draw play to mess him. Cuts back the other way. Kevin Ibum finally stops him in his tracks, but after half the first down yardage accumulated by Messam, five-yard pickup. Well, Jerome Messam shows a little bit of lightning to go along with the thunder in his running style. Dancing around a couple of would-be tacklers on that play. Messam out of Brampton, Ontario. Graceland University in Iowa. Ray bobbled the ball and threw it away. Play action that time, and is this some miscommunication between Messam and Ricky Ray as to who would take the football? It looked like Ray wanted to hand it off to Messam. But sure did. Messam gone before Ray could deliver the football. Messed Good him reaction. Up. Great reaction by the veteran quarterback to throw that football into open space. Just get rid of it. This fourth quarter looks like it's going to be a battle of field position now. David Duvall. He's going to run with it, and downfield, and look at Matt Black go. Matt Black has it down the sideline. Matt Black down to the 20-yard line, to the 10, the 5, he scores! Matt Black, 80-yard. Hunt return yards, touchdown. Edmonton number 25. Penalties decline. Result of a play is a touchdown. Out of nowhere, Matt Black comes back, over the shoulders it, takes it down the sideline, and the Eskimos lost him. Well, this is just a great heads-up play. Matt Black grabs this football because he wants to draw the no-yards play. A heads-up football play just turned into my nomination for the highlight of the night. Did he step on the sideline? No. Matt Black, out of Toronto, Saginaw Valley State, has the touchdown. Only the second 
punt return for a touchdown this season. We had a lot of them early on last year. From a guy you wouldn't think would take it back all the way. Matt Black with the touchdown. Black takes it back. 80 yard punt return. Damon Duvall got some pressure there, rolled out and then kicked it and then Black found the short side of the field and took it the distance. What a different play that was. What a turn of events here for the Toronto Argonauts. Well, you knew Mike O'Shea would eventually have something tricky up his sleeve on special teams, but not even Osh could have drawn no, that one up. did not draw that up at all. Black has the touchdown. Argos have a 25-16 lead. Archie Whitlock has a couple blocks here. Whitlock got tripped up to the 34-yard line. Let's take a look back at Black. Well, now, you know any time on a, a kick return for a touchdown that the return man is going to have to get a little bit of help in terms of blocks from his teammates. Well, this block, key block on this return comes from a rather unique source. It's equipment man Tom Bryce on the sidelines. Bugsy. Good old Bugsy steps in to pick up a water bottle that had been on the field of play with Black approaching on the sidelines. He moves it out of the way to make sure no one's going to trip on it. And as Bugsy's going to tell the story to his grandkids one day, he sprung Matt Black for he the touchdown. He sprung him. Way to pick up the Gatorade. My goodness. Well, Ricky Ray needs some answers now. And needs a response to that. Jerome Messam on the receiving end. Kevin Ivan brings him out of bounds near the 40-yard line. You've got to love how Jerome Messam is responding to the opportunity he's been given to play here with the Edmonton Eskimos. Off to an outstanding start since joining the green and gold. Getting lots of touches, and he's making the most of them. Eight-yard gain, second and two now. Lots of time left here. Matt Black's first CFL touchdown, a punt return. And the second return for touchdown in the league this year. On a kick, Messam. Raffle to the ground again. Right the middle. It's going to be short of a first down, but the question is by how much? Might be a half yard, maybe a full yard here, short of a first down. Cavis Reed looks on, trying to stretch his unbeaten record to 5-0. and oh. Getting a stern test tonight from the Invaders from Toronto. Well, the Toronto Argonauts are a team that has seen their share of adversity already here in the 2011 season. We're seeing their toughness and resilience early on, too. Next up for the Argos, they're home to Montreal. Next Thursday, the Eskimos will go to Winnipeg on Friday. Jim Barker is kind of loving now with the officials after being a little upset at the end of the first half. It was fine this week for comments criticizing the officials. So it'll be third and one, based on the fact that the Eskimos gave the ball away on downs the last time. They're going to kick this. Owens is back at his 20. Duvall puts his leg into it. Owens comes straight up, bumble the football. Edmonton has it. How about that? Jim Barker wants a no yards call. And right into the hands of Delroy Clark, the former Argo. This has been a strange game, hasn't it? Well, the last two.